Jürgen, thank you very much for being with us and for talking to us about value creation during transformation. Pleasure to be here. So we thought we'd do this in three parts. Talk a bit about value creation and what that term really means, about the role that the C-suite and especially the CFO can take in value creation programs, and thirdly talk about portfolio management, how active portfolio management can support in value creation transformations. Starting with the first, value and value creation. What does this term really mean? Is it purely financial? I, I would say that uh, value creation is uh, achieving a higher standard. And uh, while several of the, of the measuring ways are in, in a financial terms, um, uh, the, the, the means to get there and the content of it is much broader. It has to do about people, it has to do about culture, and it has to do about uh, are, we, are we moving our agenda and our performance in several categories in the right direction. Let's talk about the role of the C-suite in value creation, especially focusing on your job as the CFO. What is the role you can play in a value creation program? Well, I, I believe the, the CXO level uh, as, as a combined group has, has the role of, of, of performance generator, performance developer and value creator team. In particular, I would, I would say that um, my role is, is partly being an activist uh, in value creation when that is needed. And the second may be an, uh, going between and a facilitator role uh, between the CXOs, between, in, in the team, uh, to make sure that we have transparent and good discussions and that we are uh, taking the tough priorities uh, that value creation often implies uh, in a good and open way. In this context, Jürgen, what, what is the biggest single challenge to you as the CFO with regards to driving value creation at Telenor? Axel, it, it must be the act of balancing. Today's environment uh, uh, implies a lot of complexity. Uh, we have talked about many levels and parts of value creation. There is a large stakeholder environments. There are rapid changes. So, so the complexity is higher than ever. And then uh, in true value creation, obviously, uh, you need then to balance, for example, the, the short-term gains uh, versus the longer-term transformational activities. And also allow that uh, a, big, a big space around the table uh, when we do our priorities. And that is a struggle every day. But if you set up uh, the good dialogues, the right people, uh, some good matrices and, and, and KPIs, uh, that it's possible. In the context of value creation, could you, could you talk to the role of portfolio management on group level? How does portfolio management contribute? Portfolio management uh, is of course a, a vital part of a, of, a, of a group or a top management's uh, agenda and, and hence also a vital part of, of uh, value creation. Um, I, I would like to address it, if I may, in, in two different ways. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the business portfolio a large group is, is holding uh, is one dimension of it. And, and for Telenor, we have, we have lately made a decision to sharpen that portfolio a little bit uh, in order to and, and, uh, increase value creation, take out some businesses which are having limited uh, development potential in our context uh, and gives us an opportunity to be more granular uh, in, in spending time uh, and nurturing those units and those businesses that can really uh, further develop in a significant way. The other part is, of course, how close are you on the, the, the different units, i.e. how active are you into your portfolio more on an operational and strategic ongoing basis. Uh, it is attached to the first issue. Uh, you need to kind of be able to, to get your arms around it and really spend time with those units. There will be things that group uh, and top management see quicker and easier and more holistic that are beneficial for the local business. Uh, opposite, there, there are signals that need to be picked up from the local business 
uh, that you will struggle to pick up if you're not close enough on those businesses. How has the drive for value creation changed over the last few years? I believe uh, um, uh, the, the term and the, and the content of it has become broader. We are in more complex terrain. We are under uh, heavier scrutiny. Um, uh, the expectations to global companies has been raised uh, on several elements, uh, not necessarily the financial one, but, but uh, on, uh, on how we deal with peoples, how we are uh, uh, beneficial for local communities in which we operate, uh, how we relate to dilemmas around uh, corruption and, and, and uh, security, IT, cyber security. So it's been a much broader agenda uh, and we are measured in what value we contribute with uh, to the shareholders but more so to the customers and to the society around us uh, in a in much tougher way. On top of that technology is moving quicker and uh, new business models are entering the stage. Um, so, so the bar has been raised uh, and the CFO perspective needs to reflect that, um, that, that makes the, co the role of the CFO also more complex uh, and, uh, and um, a CFO today need to embrace uh, all those elements uh, and not only uh, the financial aspect. Jürgen, thank you very much for this insightful discussion. Thank you very much, Axel. Pleasure being here.